welcome back to Go Figure Customs YouTube channel for video seven. I really thought I was gonna be able to get this done in the sixth video, but it just did not happen. There's just, there was just too much to do. Even when you're getting this close to being done with the figure, there's still, still enough that it warranted a seventh video. Um, the good thing about that is uh, there is not much left to do just the final touches on this so it won't be a 30 minute video which will leave us plenty of time to put some nice high res pictures at the end of this um so let's get back to uh talking about the gun for a minute all right so we've got the gun primered like i said what i'm going to do now is do a base coat of the iron breaker And then once that's dry, I'm going to do washes, successive washes with the black wash. Um, and it's got to dry each time. And I usually do one side at a time. So, I mean, it's a, it's an, I won't say it's an exhaustive process, but it's a lengthy one, especially, you know, luckily it's not anything bigger than this small rifle. It's not like a whole figure. Um, but it does take a while to do. I think it's worth it in the end. But the point there is, uh, there's not really much point of me shooting video of of it. So what I'm gonna do uh, is a before and after, pretty much. Do a before, so you saw the gun before I primered it. And you'll see the gun after I get this dry brush, or this, not dry brush, the base coat on, and then I will do successive layers. It will probably take me the rest of the evening to do. Like I said, it's, a, it's an exhaustive process. Um, I did say it's not an exhaustive, I don't know. Is it an exhaustive process? I don't know. It's time consuming, that's for sure. Uh, again, always nice to have something else uh, another project to work on while you're waiting for paint to dry. I'm trying to get one other figure done tonight. Uh, another custom that I've been working on for months and haven't been happy with how it's been coming, but I finally had a breakthrough and am almost done with it and I'm hoping to get it done tonight. That I will be painting eyes on. Unlike this one, which is not getting eyes. Not getting a even coat on the stock for some reason. All right, so that's gonna have to dry. I'm gonna have to do another, another base, another base coat because it's just thinning out too much on the stock. I think. Actually, no, I think that's fine. All right, so there it is. It's kind of hard to even tell in the video. Uh, it's still kind of the same shade of gray. It's just more of a metallic gray now. Um, and then we're, I'm going to do successive washes of the black wash. And then we'll have a look at it uh, when it's done. Uh, what is left on this figure? The watch face. Uh, about the only thing that I need to still do to touch up is the little strap that holds his carabiner on. I just need to take a, some of the base color and just paint a little strap. Uh, other than that, uh, I think he's done. Oh, pistol. He needs a pistol still. Um, I am probably, a lot of times I cheat on this and just pull a pistol out of uh, my fodder box of weapons. Stick it in the holster because chances are it won't ever come out again. If I was doing this for a commission, uh, I don't know where my, good, my tub of guns is. I got a tub of guns here somewhere. You don't have a gun. You do not have a gun. Who's got a pistol for me? Damn it. See, this is what I hate. I'm so unorganized. I have no organizational skills. Where is my weapons? Weapons. weapons. And they're probably here somewhere. Anyway, uh, what I'll probably do is just pull out a pistol, small pistol that I 
either Marauder Task Force or BBI or even GI Joe, just something that will look nice in the holster. Um, usually I won't paint the whole gun unless I'm doing it for a commission, uh, in which case then I do paint the whole gun, but um, a lot of times I'll just paint the exposed handle that's sticking out of the holster. Uh, a lot of times, not all the time, some of the time, I will just leave it. It's not a, it's, to me, it's, it's fine just to have a, a, just a black handle sticking out of the holster, factory color. Uh, it's not worth the extra time just to paint it. Depends on the figure. Depends on my mood. But the only other thing that I might like to do, but I probably won't because I don't have the stuff for it, would be water slide decals, and I'm not very good at water slide decals. Uh, I'd like to get an FBI water slide decal to go on like the front of his vest. Um, I looked for some, I couldn't find some. I, I haven't gotten around to learning how to make my own. Uh, I could do a custom commission from the guy that makes them, but uh, I really wanna get this project done for you guys. The other thing that I could do is sculpt on with the, the sculpting stuff I use, sculpt on a flat spot to make it look like a patch and then paint the letters FBI on. And I've done, I've done lettering like that in the past. And the thing is you can tell that it's not, you can tell that I, I painted it on with a brush. It's, it, it does not, that was fine for when I started customizing I would paint you know like SWAT on the back and you know clearly the letters are not equal are not even and you can tell that it's painted on uh, I've moved kind of moved past that so I try not to do that um, I want it to look as realistic as possible and painting letters is not the way to go for that water slide decals uh, work really well um, when I can get them to work I've not had a lot of luck getting them to work either uh uh sealing guys uh, a lot of people will use sealants um i used to use a particular uh, a sealant by armory which was who made my primer um that gave it kind of i used it specifically on my navy seals because it kind of gave it a gritty coat and i kind of liked how that looked over time uh it turned it into like a sugar cookie texture i did not like it um, I do not tend to seal my figures, uh, with few exceptions. The exceptions are when I try and when I need a gloss coat, I'll paint on a gloss coat of, uh, paint just because I need it to be shiny, but anything that's matte coat, uh, I don't seal it. Uh, like I've said before, I don't play with my customs. Um, I don't. I don't have them make them playable anymore uh, just simply because again I don't have the time for it and right now I am carting all of my customs every last custom that I have made my goal this year is to get on a card by the end of the year uh, and I'm getting pretty close to pretty close to having that a realistic possibility now I did say that I was gonna um, show you what the gun looked like after I did a few washes and I've done two washes on this side. Uh, actually, I think I've done three washes on that side, and I think that's four on this side. It takes a lot of washes. Uh, I'm probably still gonna do a couple more washes on each side because it just builds up over time uh, and it looks better each and every time. That still looks a little wet. No, it's not, it just looks wet. Um, it looks the the more you do it, the better it looks. So it's it's worth the uh, extra time and effort, in my opinion. To, um, well, I say it's worth the extra time and effort. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not, uh, depending on how quickly I want to get a custom done. Uh, usually, when I get to this stage in uh, custom in my custom, I am ready for it to be done. I've been working on it for a couple of days, perhaps even a couple of months, and I just want it done. So a lot of times I'll do that technique where I was talking about where I will paint it uh, sea blue and then just do a uh, dry brush with a dark silver. But for this video, uh, I am 
doing the full wash on the gun so it looks really nice. Uh, so this is where we're at on the figure. I mean, it is, it's done pretty much almost, except one of the things that I was talking about at the very beginning of the video, uh, when we were going to prime, we we're talking about priming, we didn't get in the joint spaces. So when I pose this guy, all of a sudden he's going to have gray knees and gray elbows. This is the final step to painting your custom. Uh, and this is where you start to get paint rubs. Mm, doesn't look like I got any paint rubs off on this guy. And this is where, uh, if you are going to pose your, your figures, this is why you do uh, a lot of decent prep work and sanding your joints down so you don't get paint rubs. Um, I am posing, I will be posing this guy for, uh, the, for photos and then that's going to be it. He's going to go on a card, uh, hopefully at some point in time, and that's going to be the end of that. Uh, so I'm going to paint the inside of the joints, which looks like they will be tan because that's the color of the pads around the knee. And we used and sand for the base coat on that. So I'm going to do uh, the pads real, or the inside of the joints real quick uh, and let it set. I probably won't hit that with a wash. Uh, it's just not an area that gets exposed very often. So washes tend to rub off. But uh, one of the problems that I had mentioned earlier about the knee pads hanging over um, was that it covers the covers the top of the leg, um, covers areas on the leg. And part of this guy is, um, it did indeed cover the top part of the lower leg. So I need to go back and I, I need to touch it up anyway. So I'm just doing, um, the base coat in there, making sure it's not too thick. And that really just, oh, I got some on the knee pad there. Uh, that really just is the, the, one of the biggest tips and tricks I can give you for customizing is not, not paint. Don't let your paint get thick. Um, I think that is personally one of the biggest detractors on a custom is when somebody's painted their paint too thick. It's that melted crayon syndrome that I keep talking about. All right, his knees are done. So let's hit those elbows. Uh, get my paint to close. So I'm going back to the, well, I don't even care what color I'm using. Uh, you should, if you do care, uh, use the your base coat, whatever color you use for your base coat. I'm just using a green, the, a darker green. On the joints in there, making sure it's dark. Uh, the other part, uh, one last spot that you'll need to check is the armpits. Uh, I usually forget that spot and I don't usually hit it because I don't usually have my figures with their arms poised, uh, posed out very often. But if you can see in there, it is indeed gray in there still from the primer. So that does need to get hit. And I uh, may need to do, may need to let this dry and do a second coat. Because remember, light, thin coats. Otherwise, it's going to cake up on you. And um, it's not so much looking bad is the, the problem where it would be on the rest of the figure. It's that when it starts to cake up, it's going, you're going to get paint rubs. All right. 
the one other thing that I did do uh, that I didn't shoot on the video. Oh, backs of the legs too. If he's bent over, it doesn't, it, it's not a big deal on the Joy Toy figures because the crotch does not allow the legs to, um, to go forward very much like they do on um, Marauder Task Force and old G.I. Joe figures. But if you are using one of those figures, that's, you're going to get the, when you bend your legs forward, there is going to be that area that didn't get painted as well. Um, so you want to touch that, touch up that area as that area too. And I did have a paint error on his collar that I just remembered about. So let's hit that real quick. Okay, where the flesh tone got it. All right. Yeah, and the tops of the thighs, there is some area where the uh, pad knee pad covered so I need to get the not the tops of the thighs the bottom of the thigh uh, I need to go back in and put a strip of paint in there to cover the primer and there's a spot where the green went into the tan so let's touch that up real quick there Anyway, I was going to mention one of the things that I did that I didn't shoot. Uh, I had mentioned I thought the skin was a little light on the arms. So I did go in with uh, the the flesh wash and just put a light wash on the skin in there. And it uh, didn't really cake up too much, and I do, like the, uh, I do like how it looks. However, I've got an area right here where it didn't, where the um, wash didn't hit. Also, a frequently missed area. So this video is kind of frequently missed areas. Um, and that is really the final step on this, is hitting your uh, frequently missed areas. So let's get that done. Real quick here. Flesh tone paint. Put my brush just a little bit. A little bit goes a long way on the on the flesh tone uh, wash. A little bit goes a long way. All right, and the other arm was fine. I just missed a spot on that one arm. Uh, and the neck, the neck really kind of needs it too. I'm a little more inclined to hit it a little uh, heavier with the uh, wash on the neck because there will be shadows in real life in there. So a little heavier uh, wash in the neck area kind of gives the illusion of shadows. So I am going to do that. And I'm going to give one more swipe in the eyes, eye areas. And that actually looks pretty good. Just the swipe of flesh uh, wash in the eyes instead of painting them because they are really small in this. And like I did mention in the last video, I have seen like production figures that that's where the, what they've done. They've not painted the eyes themselves, um, like the Scolera and the Iris. They've just put a wash in there. And you know, if it, it works, I, I think it works just fine, especially on this guy because I uh, wearing a helmet and wearing a balaclava. So again, there's gonna be a lot of shadows there and the wash just kind of simulates the shadows. So while not well. We just need the, the paint in the frequently missed areas to dry, and he is done. So, with the figure done, the next step is taking decent pictures of him. That could be a video series in and of itself, depending on your level of expertise and the gear that you have. Um, I think that's a little bit more than what I want to do for a tutorial, especially not in this tutorial because this is painting 101, not photography 101. Um, but I'm going to go um, let this guy dry and take some pictures. So let's look at those pictures now. 
So here we've got a shot of the two figures side by side. The original figure is on the left and our, of course our custom figure is on the right. Um, you can see that I've missed a couple of paint details like the shotgun shells on the hip, but that's all right. I mean, this this is where you find your paint errors. Like I said in, in earlier in the video is after you've shot your pictures and you're like, ah oh, shit, I missed something. That happens, just go back and fix it. Now you can see here, like I missed the bottle on the right side of the pouch there. Uh, otherwise, I think it looks pretty good. It came out nice. The the paint apps look good. The We used the three-step process of base coat, uh, darker wash, and lighter dry brushing, and it all just kind of blends together very nicely. So this is our FBI hostage rescue team member and you can see the wash on the gun came out pretty nice. Um, actually, the successive washes, so that's what that looks like once it's finished. Um, I think that makes it, it does make the gun look a lot nicer because it doesn't have the silver on the top, it's the silver underneath. Um, let's see, what else here? Just kind of posing the figure and that's kind of the final step here is just taking pictures. Uh, you can see the pistol kind of hanging out there. Um, I did end up just using a regular old, uh, I think it was Marauder Task Force pistol. I didn't bother painting it and you can see it doesn't, it doesn't really make that big of a difference that it's not painted. Um, just some different poses of the figure just to kind of show it off. too much else to add to that. If you just watched the video series all the way through, now it's time to go get one of your own action figures and follow along from the beginning, start to finish, and paint your own custom action figure because now you know how to do it. Hopefully you found this video series educational and entertaining. Thank you for watching Go Figure Customs customizing channel and please like, share, subscribe, and comment all those social media things and thank you for watching and tune and stay tuned for our next episode.